A Season in Hell by Arthur Rimbaud A review by Louis Hillenbrand A Season in Hell is a poem in prose that was written and published in 1873 by Arthur Rimbaud, a French poet who was born in 1854 and died in 1891. Rimbaud is a particularly celebrated figure in French literature for his literary output that he produced between the young ages of 16 and 21. His aura is one of youth and restlessness that would be the seal of his short existence and his posthumous glory that has endured to this very day. He was raised in a Catholic family in Charleville in northeastern France, the son of a military man and a devout Catholic woman. She insisted that her sons be very well educated and had Rimbaud learn Latin and classics from a very young age. He excelled at school and was given a tutor at the age of 16 named Georges Isambard who encouraged Rimbaud to write his first original poetry in both French and Latin. In spite of his prolific academic performance and his strong Catholic faith, early signs of rebellion were quick to be noticed, namely a 700-word essay written as a child against the learning of Latin and the enjoyment of adventure novels and fairy tales. In 1870, when the Franco-Prussian War broke out, his mentor Isambard left the family home to take care of his aunts. This deeply upset Rimbaud to the point that he could contain his energy no longer and fled to Paris on a train without a ticket. This led him to be arrested upon arrival and be put to jail. He had to write to his tutor so that he could send him back home. Nevertheless, this return was not enough to halt his restless spirit and he fled again, living a homeless existence for the remnants of his days. In 1871, he wrote to Paul Verlaine and sent him a few of his poems, including his The Sleeper in the Valley, which Verlaine admired greatly, writing back to Rimbaud by telling him, Come, dear great soul, we await you, we desire you. Thus began the famous liaison between the two poets that was tainted with debauchery and recklessness, and that would take them across Western Europe all the way to London in 1872. During that time, Rimbaud became very displeased with his relationship with Verlaine and spent most of his time in the reading room of the British Museum. In June of 1873, Verlaine returned to his wife in Paris but quickly missed his former lover and wrote to him so that they could meet in Brussels. There, they entered an argument and, sometime later, in sheer drunken rage, Verlaine bought a pistol and ammunition and fired two rounds at Rimbaud, wounding him on the wrist. That tragic event put an end to the relationship of the two poets, and they separated permanently. Verlaine spent two years in prison for committing assault with a firearm, and Rimbaud eventually stopped his writing activity at the age of 21, after completing his major work, The Illuminations. Afterwards, he spent the rest of his life abroad, being a merchant of firearms and coffee in Ethiopia and Yemen, becoming one of the first Europeans to trade in these regions and living the fabled wanderlust life that was already fancied by the literary elites of the time as a gateway to fantasy and escapism. After many years of traveling the Near East, he returned to France and was eventually diagnosed with bone cancer. His right leg was amputated. In spite of this, however, he still felt the urge to travel, but on his way to leave the country again, his last remaining strength escaped him, and he died in Marseille in 1891 at the age of 37. The story of Arthur Rimbaud is one of the most well-known and celebrated in French literature. His was one of daring and torment, of a spirit that could not be bound by any means or by any person. His cry for freedom is heard a thousand times over in his poetry, which was ahead of its time in foreshadowing the coming modernist literature. His particular poem, A Season in Hell, that we shall study today, is one such key works that marked a departure from early symbolist-leaning works to newer modes of expression. It is divided into nine parts. The introduction presents the coming work as pages from the diary of a damned soul, taking the devil himself as its witness. The second part, Bad Blood, retraces the soul's rebellious lineage through French history, celebrating namely its Gaulish and pagan origins. The third part, titled A Night in Hell, recounts the soul's entry into hell. The fourth part, Delirium I, The Foolish Virgin, The Infernal Spouse, is an allegory of Rimbaud and Verlaine's failed relationship, in which Rimbaud speaks freely about his lover and his internal conflicts that made him an impulsive and needy person. The fifth part, 
Delirium II, Alchemy of Words, recounts the soul's lament of a disappearing youth spent envisaging the world as a fantastical realm, treating everyday places as magical venues. The sixth, seventh, and eighth parts are ruminations on the nature of the hell in which the soul finds itself until the ninth part, which sees the soul's return to the world, stronger and more pure than it was upon its entry, thus coming full circle. A season in hell is a work like no others. It also informs us greatly about the inner life of Arthur Rimbaud, especially the way he viewed his relationship with Paul Verlaine. An interesting observation that can be made is that the two seem to complete each other, regardless of their violent relationship. On one hand, ever since his childhood, Rimbaud was perceived as a very innocent and charming-looking young man, despite his internal struggles to express his freedom. This is clearly seen in A Season in Hell, and most of his other works that defied aesthetic and thematic conventions, embraced the free expression of one's raw inner being, and even did not shy away from the occasional profanity. On the other hand, Verlaine's poetic style always comes across as being crafted meticulously. For example, his first book of poetry, Poème Saturnien, is truly exquisite in nature, with lightness and eloquence that charm the heart in its thoughtful sensitivity that Verlaine expressed in his own works. And yet, he lived a life of addiction to absinthe, and went as far as to shoot Rimbaud in drunkenness before going to prison as we said earlier, and eventually converting to Catholicism in his later life. In my opinion, Arthur Rimbaud marks the transition between the symbolist and early surrealist literary movements. He stood as the sacrificial victim that announced the coming literary age, speaking in tongues misunderstood by his contemporaries. I consider his A Season in Hell to be the rite of spring of French literature, especially when considering how the Roman Catholic Church attacked it for its strange and provocative themes. In his Letter to the Seer, written to Paul de Meny, Rimbaud wrote, I want to be a poet, and I am working towards becoming a seer, you will not understand anything, and I would not know how to explain it. One has to reach the unknown by a derangement of all the senses. The sufferings are enormous, but one must be strong, be born a poet, and I have recognized myself to be a poet. This to me summarizes the spirit of A Season in Hell. It is a naked revelation of the soul in a cathartic trance. The way I perceive it, when it comes to the symbolists, they spoke of losing themselves in the beautiful realms of imagination and fantasy. We see an influence of the pessimistic thought of philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer and how the only solace was to be found in the renouncement of the world according to him. When it comes to the surrealists, however, they were deeply rooted in Freudian thought and through it in Nietzschean will to power. The symbolists wanted to escape the world into the imaginary. The surrealists wanted to bring the imaginary into the world. And between the two propositions, we have Rimbaud, facing his personal demons in A Season in Hell, embracing them and putting them down on the page in conscious catharsis, which then allows the new literary age to burst forth freely. The way he left a shackled life to wander freely in the Near East is the embodiment of this genius and testifies to the spirit of his writings, thus making him in harmony with his aspirations, a truly Nietzschean artist. In conclusion, even today we can learn a lot from Arthur Rimbaud's A Season in Hell. It is a thought-provoking work that is not easily accessible, but offers healing wisdom to those who, nowadays, while having abandoned the old creeds, still feel the shame of experiencing pain in the face of the ultimate key to happiness that our modern world shows us through our new holy icons on social media that have become our new dogmas, our new shackles. It speaks of facing oneself fully without remorse, so as to purge oneself and return from the underworld transformed and stronger. It is a celebration of the rite of catharsis and the following liberation, which Rimbaud, in his young and free spirit, showed us throughout his brief existence that has left its mark on the endless pages of eternity. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to comment below to tell me your thoughts, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content of the like. I wish you all a wonderful day and hope to hear from you soon.